Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. I'm really excited. I've got Mr. Patrick Manifold as a guest today on the podcast. He is the author of New Year Better You, the book that you can see behind me if you're watching it on YouTube or Spotify. Um, he has many different books, which we do delve into in the podcast, and I will put them in the show notes as well if you are interested by the end of it, which I know you definitely will be. He is the number one best-selling author in the personal development sector. Uh, we met in the basketball scene many, many years ago here in Australia. He is from England, where I'm from, uh, and he talks about his pro basketball career uh, at basket, uh, in college and, and in the UK. Um, his journey it has, it has massively changed since leaving Australia. He's now in Canada, and he's changed his life for the better. Um, we discuss the importance of happiness, personal development, well-being. Uh, we have such an insightful conversation around childhood um, and the impact um, on his self-worth. And... Um, you know, and you know that transformation, and then that transition from the basketball world to motivation, and and, and to writing books in the topic of personal development. Uh, I look forward for you guys to hear this conversation. Um, he brings a lot to the table, and I just know you will be able to take many, many strategies away from you. Mindset, uh, ha, ha, you know, taking good mindset philosophy away with you as well. Um, this is one not to miss again. In the meantime, go and press press subscribe uh, and follow on all our social media platforms. That really, really massively helps. Um, you, you have no idea. So please, if you're not already subscribing, please go over there and, and follow. Even leave a Google review if you can. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll be right back after the intro. Welcome to Leading Our Own Way. I'm your host, Andrew White, and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph. This podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life's challenges. Follow and subscribe, and then we can lead together forever. Patrick, how are you, my friend? I'm good, mate. How are you? Oh, mate, I'm really, really, really good. And uh, you know what? I really appreciate you joining on Leading Our Own Way. Um, I really appreciate your time. But I, I've, I've asked you to join us on the show because... Um, I've really, since we met, I mean, we'll go into that, but since we've met, I've kind of quietly been watching down the social media channels and seeing your journey. And um, I'm, you, you know what? You're part of the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing, because you've obviously been on a journey and that's why you're here today. But um, I mean, just looking at what you're doing now, it's just absolutely fantastic. I love what you stand for. And I obviously, I feel like I know your purpose, but it's not for me to share what your purpose is. But what what are you up to, to up to these days? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I've I've like I said, I've been watching you too, and I love the fact that you're trying to put something positive into the world because there's just not enough of that these days. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of leading the way there, and I appreciate that, and I think a lot of other people do too. Uh, so I'm I'm good. I'm currently living in Nova Scotia, Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, so what a journey. Things have uh, obviously moved around a little bit over the years, and we'll probably get into that at some point. But mm. yeah, um. I'm the happiest I've ever been. Uh, um, I'm not satisfied with where I'm at, and I've found a really nice cadence between uh, being grateful for all that I have whilst also pursuing all that I want with tenacity. So mm. I think I've found like a nice middle ground there. Uh, but yeah, I'm um, I'm excited to to get into it. Yeah, you you just touched on you never be satisfied. Um, do you think you'll ever be satisfied? No, not for very long. And, mm -hmm. I, and I have accepted that about myself. So this is where it goes back to like self-awareness. Like I know that no matter what I have, I will always want a little bit more because in my experience, every time I've achieved something really, really big, which I thought that was the biggest thing, I've mm -hmm. got there and I've looked and thought, oh, now I'm up here. I've got a better view. I see there's other things. There's other, I, someone else used an analogy I watched on a podcast recently. He said, I climbed the mountain. And when I got to the, on top of the mountain, I thought that was the only mountain in town. But when I got to the top, I realized, oh, shit, over there, there's more mountains and they're mm -hmm. bigger and they're harder to climb and it's more fun. So yeah. I'm, I'm just empathetic to myself as a human. I know that I love to chase things. I love to like try and achieve great things. And every time I achieve something, I've got a month or so of enjoying it before I have to go and climb another mountain. So, no, I'll never be like completely content but i like that like if that's not a negative thing for me that's a positive thing so uh, i've just accepted that about myself and yeah i love it yeah great so i mean i've always kind of i suppose uh 
thought of happiness because I don't, you know, you know, some people think happiness is um, an emotion, um, whether it is or it isn't, or defined scientifically as happiness is emotion. I I believe there's three factors that I make emotion, and but you're teaching me something, so I'm, I'm willing I'm willing to adjust my some of my thought process on it because I've always kind of put uh, achieving happiness. Um, would be threefold would be you know purpose why you get up in the morning um uh, enjoyment and the third and the third third one would be satisfaction right, right. Sati- so are you, are you ever satisfied in what you do or is it you're satisfied let's say this episode right or this show or the book that you're creating you're happy with the book well let's move on to the next thing you're satisfied with the book but now we've got to go to the next thing is that how it works for you do you think yeah, for me, my happiness comes from my evolution as a person. And mm. every time, like, so if I write a book, I'm going to promote the book, get as many people to kind of read it as possible. And then I can't do any more. I can promote that book and get more people to read it, but I can't do anything else. I can't go back and edit that book. That book is done. And mm. now I need a new challenge. I love a challenge. Like, that's the thing that brings me happy. So I'm not trying to say that I'm, I'm unhappy because I'm chasing a new goal. That's how I used to be. Yeah. I didn't used to allow myself to be happy until I, I had ridiculously audaciously large goals and I didn't allow, give myself the permission to feel the joy of happiness until I'd achieved that goal. That's a terrible way to live. <laughs> I know that now. I didn't know that then. Yeah. Now I am deliriously happy every day I wake up and I just am so blessed with everything I have, but I'm, I'm still chasing things. That's just not, my happiness isn't tied up in those things anymore. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to be chasing different versions of that for the rest of my life. But my happiness is who I am when I go home and I, uh, I'm with my family. Love that. Absolutely love it. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so you've touched on a couple of things with what you're doing right now. Tell, tell the low audience where, where you're at, what you're, what you're doing for your career now then. Before we go back in time and where it all began as a, as a, as a teenager or a child, wherever you decide to go with, um, tell everybody what you're doing professionally. So right now, the thing that takes up most of my time, I own a media and marketing company called Nova Social Media and Marketing. And we basically, we have a really great team here and we build websites, we do social media, we do video production, photography, all sorts of different like digital marketing stuff and strategy and stuff like that. That takes up a lot of my time, probably 80% of my time. And then the other 20%, I have a, another business, which is like a, a high end production and photography business. I have another business, which is a property investment company, and we own a bunch of different properties and we buy and sell and do up and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then the other big part of my life is my books. So I have four or five, maybe six books at this point, Mm -hmm. and I speak professionally. So I do like kind of motivational or inspirational speaking, uh, leadership, stuff like that. So between that, like that's my biggest passion in life. And thankfully, not thankfully, like it's not lucky, I, I designed my life this way so that I would build a media company that could support all of the efforts that I'm so so passionate about. So that's why that happened. And now the company's good and we're doing more things and expanding. And uh, like I said, we have a great team. I got Joel behind the camera today by recording this for me. He's a great team member. We have Abby as well and Chelsea. So we're, we're doing some really cool stuff that I'm proud of in our community. We're helping our community to rise. Um, And I take, I take a lot of pride in that. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's incredible. And um, so with the property things, I wasn't aware of that one. What made you get into that? Mainly because I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't have a job. I don't have a 401k. I don't have any kind of, no one's going to give me money like in my retirement. So for me, the property thing is it's a long-term play. I don't take any money from it now. Everything I get, I put right back in, buy another building, et cetera. I plan on, by the time my kids are 25, I'd like to own, my goal is to own 100 different properties. And then each one of my children, however many I end up having, will have at least one property to their name, which is theirs. So then when they get out of high school and they want to go to college, if they want to use the money from that investment and rent it out, or they can sell it and have that for something else, that's kind of like my uh, mini goal. I actually haven't, I don't really talk about that much, but in my mind, that's kind of what I'd like to do with that. And then the rest of it is kind of like my retirement. So I'll just keep kind of stockpiling these properties, keep getting bigger and bigger. And then eventually when I retire, that will be my retirement because like I said, as an entrepreneur, I don't have anyone paying into my yeah. retirement really. And, I, and it wouldn't fulfill the lifestyle that I have planned for myself. So uh, that's just kind of like an investment thing that I do on the side to just try and keep things, keep the vision I have for my future intact. 
Yeah, smart. Yeah, very smart. And so before we go into the books, because I'm very interested in the books, because I've just started on my journey with uh, writing books too. Um, and I, it, it's quite addictive. I never, I never pictured myself as a writer. Um, hmm. Even though I'm a teacher, I never pictured myself as a writer. Um, Me either. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, when, I, when we first met, uh, well, actually, we'll, we'll quickly touch that. Patrick and I met uh, at a primary school here in Australia. He came to run a basketball uh, clinic at the school. And, um, you know, I was heavily involved in, 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 in Manchester with Manchester Giants, Manchester Magic, Stockport Falcons. And um, uh, Patrick is also from the UK and has played professionally with um, Glasgow Rocks, uh, represented the country. I mean, I know you can expand on that slightly, but we connected through the game of basketball at a, uh, in an educational sense. But then I don't know if you remember, Patrick, you came and actually filled out and filled in and played with me domestically as well for my team i do i was telling i was telling my wife about that the other day i was saying i was trying to explain who you were because she couldn't she's like which person are you talking about here and i was like <laughs> yeah we used to go to that thing and like it was like downtown melbourne or something like that msac albert park yeah. you know where the formula one track is yes yes uh, exactly yeah i remember 10 10 courts yeah I just, <laughs> you, and that's just so indicative of me like no matter what level i was playing at anywhere around the world any opportunity to just go somewhere and play yeah. i would just do it that, like I just love I love playing, so I would take any opportunity to just get out there and shoot some hoops. No, it was great. It was great to touch on the you know stand on the court with you. It was a, a lot of fun, um, even if it was only uh, grade A basketball. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it was fun. It was good cardio, if nothing else, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, so your family, Chelsea. You've got the three girls, Sophia, Savannah, and um, Sienna. Sienna, is that right? Yeah. Um, the three S's. <laughs> I know that wasn't that wasn't planned. It just kind of happened, and uh, yeah, I'm not mad at it until I'm yelling at somebody and I say all three of them, and I'm just I got like I got Tourette's or something. I'm like, I think it's the answer. <laughs> I can't quite get it out. <laughs> so how so old are the girls now? Sophia's my oldest. She is five. Sienna is uh, the middle child, and she's two. And yeah. Savannah is eight months. Oh, congrats! Any plans for any more? Yeah, at least yeah. one, if not two, wow. minimum. And then after that, it's just kind of icing on the cake type of thing. But we yeah. definitely we have plans for another one in the not too distant future. And then oh. if it's a boy, then we'll have a conversation because we've obviously got three girls and we'd like a boy. Yeah. If it's a boy, we'll have a conversation and see whether we want to go again. And my feeling is yes, because I, I come from a family of five and I always wanted five. And my wife comes from a family of three. She always wanted three. But now she keeps saying, I don't know if I can ever stop having children. Like she enjoys the process so much. I know some people like struggle with pregnancy. Mm. She enjoys the whole process of it and everything about it. And she loves them when they're tiny. So she's like, okay, maybe we, we might go far. So yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah, my, my partner loves the process too, to be fair. She fully, you know, embroil herself into the, all the emotions in it. She just loves that, that, that period before, it, right. you know, the child even comes out. Absolutely right. loves it. It's beautiful. Um, born to be a mother i guess That's right um so another s on the card steven maybe or <laughs> no pa his name will be patrick if we our first boy will be a patrick and that's been decided forever i'm like the sixth patrick in a row in my family so yep. that's kind of that was decided before i was even born um, plus like some people feel like that's a burden for me it never felt like that like i, I love that and i think that's going to be an exciting thing to pass continue to pass that on and mm -hmm. the middle name of the child is the mother's father's name so like yeah. his name's already kind of picked out and yeah, yeah we're excited about it and like i say touch wood we as long as we have a healthy baby for, like i used to really 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 want a boy and like when i was going to have a girl like that was a challenge for me because i just in my mind i just always assumed i was going to have a boy first yeah. and the funniest thing is now now that i have these three girls like you could say hey i can wave a magic wand and i can turn one of them into a boy and i wouldn't let you because i love them so damn much that it, it just doesn't matter and yeah. you don't know that until you know that, right? So I have empathy for, for younger Patrick, but th this version of me today is uh, just blissfully happy. Like those girls are just everything. Like I walk in the door whenever I come at home and they just run from the living room through to the, the door and they just kind of, daddy, 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 and cuddle me. And it's like, that, that means more to me than anything. The fact yeah. that they're excited for me to come home, that means more to me than any achievement that I, I can create, right? So. Yeah, I feel truly, truly blessed to have three healthy, perfect little kids and a, a wife that has just always, always been there for me. And I know will always be there for me. 
Yeah, it's amazing, man. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I wasn't, I wasn't there at the beginning, and I went on a bit of a journey. I was in a bit of a dark space myself, and you know, I thought having a child would fix everything. And, and I'll, I'll be brutally honest, it, it, it didn't. I realised massively I needed to work on myself um, first, right. and I, and I did, and I left teaching, and I became a casual teacher um, to be more present. Um, you know, do those things like I mentioned before. You know, jumping in cold water every morning to get myself going for the day doing a bit of a workout, you know, but I see that light now, what you see, you know, I, I see the joy, you know, being part of my son's basketball and, right, you know, training after school and I've never missed a game. I would, I, I left a tournament the other week not to miss his game. I, I missed a game in the tournament I was playing in because I, <laughs> I couldn't miss his game because I, right. I remember, you know, growing up, I didn't, you know, I, I had family members, of course, but would they be there all the time at basketball? No. And I remember that. Uh, and I right. don't want him to remember them. And I'm you know, the exact same way to mm -hmm. the point where like my family almost never saw me play. I think they might have, I can count on one hand all the times that my family saw me play and I played in probably thousands of games. Right? Yeah. So it's a different, it's a different thing. And I always, I didn't realize how much it upset me, I guess, as a kid, but looking mm -hmm. back, it did. But now like I volunteer coaching basketball so that I can be Sophia's coach so that I can be there and make exactly. sure that her and all her friends get to, to play the game that I love. So yeah, it's a, it changes you for sure. Mm. And I think going off our conversations, I feel like the, uh, the, the, the name manifold seems to be a, a symbol. I don't know if the symbol is the right word, but it seems to be uh, something that you stand behind. You've mentioned about your, your son being called Patrick and so on. And we mentioned in our pre-chat about people being proud of the name Manifold. Talk about that a little bit. Where did that come from? Honestly, the funny thing is it doesn't even come from my, from my mum or dad. There was no like real pride around the name, mm. for, so to speak. But for me, and I didn't, even, I didn't even know that until I became a father. And yeah. then these children have inherited this name. So if I'm not proud of it, why the hell would they be? So yeah. it started as that. And then it turned into, I guess, a way for me to teach my children who they were. Because most people, like I know when I grew up, we were poor. We were not necessarily happy. And we came from a neighborhood where there wasn't much opportunity. And so I had all these things like, oh, that's just, my, I've accepted my fate. That's just who I am. Everyone around here is poor. Everyone around here is unhappy. Everyone around here can't find work. Everyone around here struggles with education. Everyone around here, negative, negative, negative. But when Sophia, as soon as she started being able to talk, she would do things and it wouldn't be the way that I think that she's going to be the best human. So my job, I believe, as a father is to help my children become the best human beings they can possibly be. Right? And that's, some of it is like super sweet, caring and loving. And I think I'm probably like the most loving dad in the world to an annoying point where I kiss them like a hundred times before they go to bed but i'm also quite tough i'm also like my my example that i set for them is what i expect them to be so if sophia will like fall over and have a little like tumble if she gets sad i'll remind her that she's a manifold and i'll like i'll she'll do something that's brave and at this point with sophia she now knows all of these things so it's like kind of second nature and she does something I'm like wow that was really brave how do you get so brave babe she said because i'm a manifold daddy I said, okay. And then she'll do something like really, really smart. Like she'll try really, really hard at something and say, how come you're trying so hard? I saw that you, you failed and you didn't do it right the first time, but you kept going and then you figured out, why did you do that? She said, because manifolds never give up, daddy. Right? So yeah. she is being programmed to yeah. believe that because she is a manifold, she is intelligent. She is kind and cares for others. She is ambitious. She works harder than everyone else around her. She does everything she can to be the best person she can be. So all these kind of like these traits, which I obviously I've wrote books about this kind of stuff mm. and I'm obsessed with personal development. She is in when she, by the time she gets to 21 years old, she is just going to be, all of them are going to be, so, have such a great mindset and self-belief and they're not going to look to other people around them for validation on whether, mm. you know, their shoes look good or whatever the case may be like, they're going to be at a much higher level. And that, I believe that's my responsibility as a father and as a man to pass that on to my children. That mm. A, they should be proud of where they came from, not just their name, but also their heritage and their history and stuff like that. But then also, like, this is who manifolds are. Like, we don't quit. Right? Yeah. We, I had a situation a couple of years ago where someone was in our peripheral in our life, and one day they just quit. And I was upset about it. 
and Sophia asked me why I was upset, but I said, because that person quit. And we went through this kind of uh, learning process. And now manifolds always finish what they start. All right. So every time, like, and this kind of thing is like the list keeps getting longer every day, like something manifolds of this, manifolds of that. But they're, it's always positive. It's always something that is going to help her become a better person. Not so that she can just necessarily be super happy and successful herself, but just so that she can be an example to other people around her. I called my, my middle name of my third daughter, Savannah. Her middle name is Hope. Mm. And I am hopeful that she is going to bring hope to the world. Like she is going to be someone that is at such a high level in whatever she chooses to do that she's going to inspire people around her just like uh, hopefully her daddy does a little bit. Yeah. No, it's beautiful, man. Yeah, absolutely love it. I, you know, yeah, I, I do that with my son and even the kids that I teach when they say, I can't do this or I can't do this, can't do that. Sorry. I always say, just put the word yet at the end of that sentence. Oh, as soon as you said, use that word in my house, that word that you just use can't, that is as bad as the other C word. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.